cuties welcome to another video here on my channel for those of you who are new my name is Trika of Trika Plans and to my returning subscribers welcome back family this is where the planning and the cuteness collide and here at Trika Plans hashtag cuteness squad we are here for all the cuteness the planning creating organization lifestyle inspiration encouragement and so much more and if you're not already subscribed to the family, we would love to have you. All you simply have to do is tap the red subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated on uploads and lives. Also give your girl a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I hope everyone is having an awesome, awesome Sunday, an awesome day. I hope everyone is feeling rejuvenated and just free-flowing in the spirit we are here for our soulful sundays and it's an extended weekend and i am just home relaxing enjoying myself um i got some much needed rest chatted with a couple of people today and i'm feeling amazing and i just wanted to let you guys know that so we are here um we are here the 13th through the 19th on the 13th we had mark 1 and 8 changed forever on the 14th Luke 3 and 16 transformed lives and so forth and we are here on the 19th I am trying to strategically stay up with this keep up with it so here is our soulful Sunday um, recap reflection so if you are interested in seeing what all um, I am about to dive into then just stay tuned okay so we are here um, on the recap and the reflection for Monday the 13th we read mark 1 and 8 changed forever I suggest reading mark um, chapter 1 verse 1 through 9 so that you can get the full message here prior to Jesus ministry on earth John the Baptist proclaimed to all of Judah that one was coming to baptize them with the Holy Spirit also I have here Mark 1 verse I mean, chapter 1 verses 5 and 8 fulfilling the way for the Lord's coming. That's verses 2 and 3. Oh, wait a minute. No, oh, back up. I apologize. Fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah and Malachi, John prepared the way for the Lord's coming. Verses 2 and 3. Okay. Who were convicted by John? word those and then I have my notes here let me make sure I get all of the notes out okay y'all know I'll be writing up something here okay so John prepared who were convicted by John's word those entered the waters to experience a baptism of repentance showing they had turned to God to be forgiven in verses in verse 4 Jesus came to earth to offer himself as a living sacrifice for our sins and ultimately to provide an inner baptism of the holy spirit John, just prior to his death he said it is best for you that I go away because if I don't the Holy Spirit won't come if I don't go away then I will send him to you John verses 16 you know, John 16 verse 7 so I didn't highlight this so let's highlight that when we receive salvation through belief in Jesus we're in dealt by and baptized with the Holy Spirit although our eternal life in Christ is secure the process of the spiritual transformation to lifelong we're changed forever even as we continue to grow to be more like Jesus as the Spirit works within us I um, 
that was a sermon today in, in, in church. And actually they were talking about repenting and all different things. So when I do my actual Bible study, I will tap on my sermon messages from church. So and on to Tuesday, let's reflect and do the recap on Luke 3 and 16, Transformed Lives. Read If you read Luke 3, chapter 3, verses 1 through 16, you will get the whole breakdown. Someone is coming soon who is so much greater than I, oh, excuse me, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the scraps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We can learn from John the Baptist on who or what we can depend on. Quoting the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah um, chapter 40, verses 3 and 5, he declared that it was time for the people to prepare for the coming of the Lord, preparing a path for his triumphant entry as king in Luke chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. His message struck the hearts of all of those who was assembled, and the people wondered if John was the Messiah, but he quickly pointed to the coming of Jesus, who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire, in verse 16. John's word point, John's word point to the reality that the power to live a transformed life is only possible through our baptism in Christ. When we repent, he washes us clean from our wrongdoing and fill us with his spirit. We, in general, can respond with gratitude. We can set free no longer bond by shame over our sins. So we're set free once we repent. And that's, you have to repent in order to be forgiven of your sins. Now that don't mean just keep going doing the same thing over and over because then you have a bigger problem. To see, oh, he provides what we need to prepare for this, for his return. Excuse me. To see transform people in action. You gotta read Acts 2, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, which tells of early churches after the coming of the Holy Spirit. At Yep, so that's that's very interesting. Just making sure all of my notes are here. So remember to read Acts 2 verses 42 through 47, which you can get a better understanding of the repentance and the baptism and all of that. So let's move on to um, we're on Wednesday. Remember when Warbinder Wednesday is on this day, I didn't put my little stickers on because I, um, I was in a different area of my home when I was doing this, so I didn't feel like running back upstairs to get my bag. So, um, Warbinder Wednesday at seven um, on She Loves Planners channel. That is some other great wisdom that you can get. Um, join in on Wednesdays for Warbinder Wednesday. So, and that's Bev um, Beverly. I call her Bev. Pop over to her channel. She loves planners. So, um, let's do our reflection for Wednesday. Matthew 3 and 9. The Great Iconolist. Read chapter 3, verses 1 through 11 is what I recommend. So, don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. 
that means nothing for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. God is not a divine idea. He is the great iconolist. This means the the iconolist means image destroyer. He is able to save us from ourselves. In um, chapter 1, verse 21, in losing our lives to find him, we find true life. This is in chapter 10, verse 39. Also read John chapter 5, verse 39, to see how Jesus challenged religious leaders for being so blinded by their own interpretations of scriptures they couldn't see how he fulfilled them moving on to Thursday John chapter 1 verse 29 undoing death read all the way to um, verse 31 the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world John the Baptist was right Jesus really does take away the sin of the world read John chapter 1 verse 29 and also read 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 And Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. The payoff or result of sin is death. Sin devours and destroys our bodies, minds, souls, the earth, our economies, our communities, our social and religious structures. It destroys everything. Jesus tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. In John chapter 11 verse 25. And not only will we live after death, but we but when we follow Jesus, we begin to live fully now. Jesus came to bring us an abundant life. In John chapter 10 and 10 he is making all things new making all things new in revelation 21 verse 5 that's what god life does it brings new life resurrection to all it touches reflect on deuteronomy 30 and 19 another good one how can you choose life each day so that you might truly live that's a good question to ask yourself on to friday we have mark 1 and 11 you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy read mark chapter 1 verses 9 through 13. God expressed his care for Jesus at the beginning of his earthly ministry. During his baptism, in that setting, Jesus repeatedly resisted Satan's sinful office until the devil gave up and disappeared. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Suppose the father's last words in Jesus' mind during his temptation, dearly loved. Jesus didn't have to fear failure. In 1 John chapter 4 in verse 18. The father was awake of what was <clears throat> excuse me not awake 
<laughs> Sometimes when I be reading, I just be in my own little world. But the father was aware of what was going on and provided the power Jesus needed to overcome each enticement. Maybe you feel as if you're alone in a struggle with sin. No, you're not. The battle is fierce. And you need to know that God is on your side. Yes, he really is on your side. God loves all his children as much as he loves his own son. And we are his children. In John 17 and 23, he offers to overcome temptation. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, you will become an example of what his love and power can accomplish in the most difficult of circumstances. Also read 2 Timothy 2, 21 and 23. 21 through 22 and consider the rewards that came from resisting temptation isn't that powerful yes resisting temptation is hard but we got to stand fast we got to hold on we got to continue to pray and continue to manifest it so for saturday the recap is john 3 and 17 also read john 3 verses 1 through 17 that way you can get all of the message <clears throat> excuse me god sent his own son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him most of us wouldn't measure up to the judgment of others and all of us have fallen short of god standards in romans 3 and 23 sin keeps us separated from him and leaves us spiritually dead with no hope of entering the kingdom of god without being born of water and the spirit in john chapter 3 verse 5 through faith in him and his gift to us we can stand blameless and confident before God. In Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, truly the faithful love of God never ends. His mercies begin afresh each and every morning. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23. Also read 2 Corinthians 5 verses 11 through 17 and be bolstered in your faith as you reflect on the newness of life we have in Christ. Amen. I mean, this sometimes I get lost in these in these stories in these chapters because it's like I can I can envision it. I can you know, I'm relating to all of this stuff now. Before I I didn't now I'm taking out the time to read it for myself. I'm not forced to read it. I'm actually enjoying reading the Bible and the stories myself. I, you know, everybody walk is different. I have turned, I, I, I just have turned to trying to do better for myself and focusing on me and what I need to do. And in that, I am really enjoying this. I am not perfect by far. But I am a work in progress and I'm not a preacher or anything like that. But I just want to be able to spread the word and help get the word out there. You know, I I know a lot of people kind of like see Soulful Sundays. They don't really know what it's exactly about. But it's just like putting the soul back into Sundays because Sundays is... A day that you really do nothing and today was the first day that I honestly just took time to just read read and you know do all of my scriptures and just chill out for today now I'm not gonna say every day can be every Sunday can be like that because like realistically we have work we have so many different things going on but at the end of the day I'm enjoying it Okay, on to today, which is our Soulful Sunday, Sunday the 19th, 
we're going with Matthew 11 and 3. John's questions. Also read Matthew 11 um, verses 2 through 11. So that way you can get even more of the message. Are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? John the Baptist was not wealthy, yet his name lives on in the pages of the Bible. Jesus said of him, of all who have ever lived, none is greater. No one is greater. That seems like the ultimate honor to me in Matthew 11 and 11. I also suggest reading Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 through 4 and Isaiah chapter 35 verses 4 through 6 to see the context of the Old Testament passages referenced by Jesus in Matthew 11. Okay, so that is the ending of our Soulful Sunday for today. It, I hope these Soulful Sundays can reach someone. Um, I hope that it just, you know, have you to just look into it a little more. Look into the Bible a little more. And, I mean, sometimes I get lost in it. I'm enjoying it. I will see you guys next Sunday. Well, I will be out of town, so but I'm going to go ahead and film it. And I'm going to schedule it so that we can remain on schedule. Um, we'll be doing the 20th through the 26th next week and then I'll have this week I'll have February's plan whatever we're going to be doing for February I'll have that up as well and I will see you in the next well I'll see you at the next Soulful Sunday I can't wait and I hope everyone remember to just relax unwind and have a good day. I want you all to be blessed. And remember, if you're not already subscribed to the family, we would love to have you over here at Trico Plans. All you simply have to do, tap the red subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated on uploads and lives. Also, give your girl a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I welcome you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Toodles!